up guys Sean here mostly metal another t-shirt update for you the final t-shirt update I promise uh, gonna pull through the last of my t-shirts I hope there's some gems in here for you all um, first we are listening to Holy Arrow this is a um, Chinese band uh, this is their album Oath of Allegiance on Pest Recordings. I'll talk more about this album. <clears throat> or I think it's probably EP um, at a later date. Chinese, black metal, uh, a lot of their stuff's um, the themes are around Ming's dynasty and the troops that fought and, and whatnot, so I'll be talking about that more later, but first we're going to dive in to some t-shirts. Um, like I said, this is the last of the bunch, so let's see what we got here. This is a Rise Against t-shirt from the Unraveling era. This was before Fat Records on the back. Uh, this was before they came became kind <clears> of <throat> alternative punk rock uh, shit that you hear on your local radio station. Um, I really liked their first The Unraveling. And I think maybe the one after it, and then they got a little soft, in my opinion, but... Just my opinion. Uh, this is an Agalock t-shirt with a creepy uh, creepy something on the front there. Nothing on the back. Don't know where I got that. <clears throat> I don't know where I got that Rise Against t-shirt either. This one I got in a record store. Um, Subhumans. Rats. Great, great punk rock band. I think they're from the UK, maybe. Um... I don't remember. I have, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple of their releases. I never got to see them live, uh, of course, but um, great, great stuff nonetheless. And I'll link all this stuff below so you can listen. This is uh, Old Crow Medicine Show. I got this at one of their shows, I believe. They're kind of a folk. Uh, nothing on the back of that one or the other. Uh, kind of a folk country-ish band. Um, I got to see them actually play a super small bar before they blew up. Um, those of you that know might know their song Wagon Wheel. Um, it was done by the guy's name escapes me now. He redid the song or covered the song. Darius Rucker, is that his name? From Hootie and the Blowfish. Did a terrible job uh, of that song, but um, if you explore some of the other stuff and you kind of like the country Americana singer-songwriter stuff, I think you really like Old Crow Medicine Show. They do have a lot of upbeat songs too um i like to see them live at least two or three times and they always put on a great show so i highly recommend um that i see here a couple of yet more avail t-shirts this is a super old one i don't know when i got this it has their dixie logo on the back but it's kind of a like a weird brownish color you can't probably tell because of the, the lighting but um, yeah, that's a super old one. I don't remember where I actually purchased that one. I did see a veil five or six times, probably. This is another one <clears throat> with the Over the James logo on it. I've spoke ad nauseum about a veil in the t-shirt update, so I won't bore you all with that again. This is a Mastodon short sleeve. This is from the Leviathan era has a design on the back with a little Relapse Records logo at the top. I don't remember where I got this one either. I did see Mastodon live once, but it was after the Leviathan era, so I don't remember where I got that t-shirt, but I've obviously had it for a while because it's, it's all beat to shit. Uh, next up, I don't know what this is. Oh, yeah. I really like this shirt quite a bit. Um, it's DIY on the front, and it's someone um, trying to st stabbing themselves. And then this is uh, Val. They have their logo on the back with what's it say? Baton Rouge from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I always thought that was a, this was an awesome uh, T-shirt design because DIY, as you know, is kind of like a big thing in the uh, metal community. And the DIY here is a guy sliced himself open, so that was pretty cool. I did get this at a show. I just got to see Val in a space probably as big as my tiny living room. Um, 
some years ago, there was a place not too far from me that used to have small shows, and I got to see Thou, Weekend Nachos, um, Cloud Rat, and uh, False, I think, Northless, maybe. They all played this super small, intimate show in kind of a DIY punk spot that also had a record store in it, which is, it's no longer there, but um, it was a great, great show seeing I mean, that was, they were like right there in front of me. They're very intense uh, live band, so our weekend nachos. This shirt I got in Canada. I remember uh, this is the Day Glow Abortions. Thought the that was kind of a cool design, and then on the back got Day Glow Abortions as well. Um, it says explosive concepts, poisonous ideas, corrosive language. They're kind of a punk rock band. I believe they were from, I don't remember. Um, I have a couple of their releases. I should probably dig back into these guys. I remember liking them a lot. Um, I don't hear a lot of people talk about Dayglow abortions, but I remember getting a lot of looks when I wore this shirt because um, Dayglow abortions was on the front. People are like, what is that guy <coughs> wearing? I even had a buddy of mine tell me he thought the shirt was offensive, so I knew it was uh, good, but I'll put some links to Dayglow Abortions below. A lot of people don't talk about them, uh, but they are great. I was in Canada with my buddy and his sister. Oh, God, how many years ago was this? Whenever Beanie Babies were popular, um, she wanted the Canadian Beanie Baby, and apparently you can only get it in Canada. So where I live, you can actually drive to uh, Michigan and to Detroit, and there's a bridge you can cross to get to Windsor, um, over there in Canada. It's about six hours, I think. So she drove, we drove six hours for a Beanie Baby, but I went just to kind of tag along. There's a um, big casino there on land you could gamble at, which was kind of a new concept to, to us where I live. <clears throat> we're used to riverboat casinos because they, you know, for some reason it's okay to gamble on water but not land. It's so stupid. Um, now we can gamble from our computers. But anyway, um, we were there for the Beanie Baby. She found one. I don't remember what she paid for it too much, I'm sure, but we went to a um, kind of a crappy record store. I didn't find anything good, but I found a uh, Day Glow Abortions t-shirt. So that's the story on that one. Uh, this is kind of basic, yeah, sick of it all t-shirt. Um, great hardcore band. One of the best, if not the best, New York hardcore bands. I know that's a lot of up for debate, but I've seen them live probably two or three times. Um, they played at a university not too far from me with the Unseen um, opening and they just put on a phenomenal show. It was in this super small space at like a college rec center or something like that. Um, and no matter where you see Sick of It All play, it's always uh, a great time. So I highly recommend it when all this uh, virus shit stops. Go check them out. <clears throat> uh, this is Snapcase um, Progression Through Unlearning with an autograph on the front. No idea. It was a ma band member. I don't remember which band member. On um, Summer Tour 1998. Um, Snapcase or Hardcore... Hardcore band. They always had kind of a unique sound. I thought um, this is kind of one of those three-quarter sleeve baseball t-shirts, but um, I really liked them. At the time, I liked Progression, progression Through Unlearning. Um, I was huge in the Misfits at the time, and they had put out a Misfits cover. I think it was maybe She. Um, I believe I saw them at Warp Tour in 98. I have to check and see if they played Warp Tour back then, but um, it was a great show, great time. Um, that Warp Tour in particular was, um, I remember going for a few bands, although I cannot remember for the life of me. I'll have to look up who played 98 at Warp Tour. Um, Let's see what we got. <clears throat> this is Def Leppard. Seven day weekend tour. This actually has dates on the back. Um, I. <clears throat> which show did I go to? None of these that I can recall. Oh, Champaign, Illinois, I think is where I saw them. December 6th. Um, I was a. Uh, Big fan of the first few Def Leppard albums, but um, I wasn't into them at the time. Didn't get into them until I think this is when Adrenalize came out. Uh, like Let's Get Rocked and uh, Make Love Like a Man, maybe. Um, 
but I like the early stuff. And Joe Elliott was having um, throat issues, and there were some songs that he or that they did not play because there's throat issues. And of course, a couple of those were the songs I wanted to hear. Photograph was one. Didn't play that one. Had has Def Leppard play a show without Photograph? Um, let the other guys sing it or or something. But they do put on a good live show. It was in the round. There were fucking lasers everywhere. Uh, it was pretty pretty impressive. I don't think they had an opening band. They just came out and played for, I think, about two hours. Um, and then after this album, I kind of lost interest um, in Def Leppard. I still listen to the old stuff uh, from time to time. But, um, yeah, they've really lost me recently. This is a good one. For some of you, anyway. Pantera, Far Beyond Driven. That's the Far Beyond Driven. That's the cover of the album. This is from the World Tour 1994. I got him old. This is 26 years old. Um, this has a Far Beyond Driven. This has the tour, Far Beyond Driven tour on the top. World Tour. I saw them in most likely Chicago or St. Louis. Um, I saw them a couple times on this tour. One time uh, in Chicago, they had Crowbar opening for them. And I wasn't real familiar with Crowbar, but they put on a great show. And then another time, I think it was Sepultura and White Zombie opening up. So that was uh, at a huge outdoor place. So I don't remember. I think I got this one at the Crowbar show, though. Um, the original cover of this album, or an alternate cover, was actually a woman bending over with this um, screw going into it. I actually had a copy of it. It was on an Australian uh, release, and they were, I think the record company made them switch the cover. Um, I sold that a long time ago. I just didn't see the value in it for me, but yeah, it's kind of cool. Blast from the past. Um, I really like Pantera at this uh, stage, 94, too, because if you remember... A lot of the bands like that, even Slayer to agree, were getting softer. Metallica, Anthrax, they were all kind of going this more rock-oriented direction. And I remember Pantera released um, a vulgar display of power around the time that Metallica was blowing up. And I I heard Far Beyond Jerry was getting ready to come out. And I was like, please, God, Pantera, don't put out a, a pussy um, cock rock album like some of these other bands. It's not cock rock, but you guys know what I mean if you're fans of those bands. And I heard um, the first song I'm trying to remember what it is. Strength Beyond Strength. I can't remember the first song on that album, but it's a ripper. And then it went into Becoming, and I listened to that album, Far Beyond Driven, um, non-stop, and I was like, thank you. Metal Pantera actually put out a heavier album and went the opposite direction of all of their peers, and I think it paid off for them. You know, Metallica was singing Enter Sandman and stuff. Um, Pantera had songs like Five Minutes Alone, which I guess you could argue, argue were kind of uh, cheesy-ish, but um, still pretty, pretty fucking heavy. So shout out to Pantera for saving um, that era of metal. Uh, last but not least, this is a t-shirt. I think I commented, I don't know if Brian Arkham's going to see this or not, uh, but he showed World Demise, and he mentioned this t-shirt and um, how he used to get a lot of looks from people that would wear it. I used to wear this too, and I didn't know I still had it until I found this other tote. This is uh, Obituary. Just kind of, I always like the plain white logo, but the, the back is what people found offensive. Uh, it's a, I, don't, I never knew if it was a hunter or if it was a, um, a seal. I would think it was a baby seal that was um, hurt because of an oil spill. And this guy was putting it out of his misery. But I remember wearing this as a, I was a line cook and people would see that shirt. And like, oh my God, you support the killing of animals? And I'm like, actually, that's... If you do your research, which no one ever does, and looks into obituary, um, it's The World Demise is the album, and of course it's about the world and what we do to it, and um, things like this happen, and how we kind of destroy things, and how mankind ruins things, but um, <clears throat> no one ever took the time, of course, to ask me about that. I can't tell you how many people saw this, and I like on the bottom there, too, you can see the, uh, I don't know if you can see that. 
it's got the 1994 blue grape copyright on it, so you know it's legit. But yeah, we used to wear this shirt probably twice a day for I don't know how many days in a row. <clears throat> the End Complete was my first obituary album, and I couldn't believe how heavy it was. And then World Demise came out, and some of the grooves they had on that are just fantastic. Still to this day, it's a, it's a great album, so I highly recommend that. Uh, so that concludes my t-shirt collection. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the trip down memory lane. Um, there's a bunch of contests out there. I know I said I was going to do a 100 subscriber contest, which I have surpassed. So thank you to all who have subscribed. Um, I think I'm going to wait a little bit, though, just because I feel like every time I pull up my YouTube feed and, and start going through videos, everyone's got a contest going on right now. Um, and I'm relatively new to the community, so I don't know if that's a normal occurrence, but um, there are so many out there. Uh, I just don't want to inundate people with, hey, here's another contest. Uh, I'm not really sure what to do yet either, so more to come on that. I have a huge collection of cassettes to get through there and there. I've got the Soar box set, cassette box set. Um, I finally got that gutted in that I've been raving about um, and a bunch of other stuff on um, some cool vinyl. So I will be making some more videos here shortly. Hope you guys enjoy the trip down memory lane. Um, if you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to talk about metal. And hope you all are safe. And I will catch you all very soon. Later.